in Parliament and in government are a product of these primary elections and hence this uh, interest. So in this discussion, we are asking our politicians how candidates are selected, uh, how they are balancing demographics such as youth and women uh, in their selections and with some of the highlights in their manifestos. <laughs> Representatives from the political parties who will help us make the sense of these elections are from my far left, we have Dr. Julia Sumsevanti, uh, representing the Rainbow Coalition led by Joyce Mojuru. We have Zarius Chris Mochanga. We have the MDC T Kope uh, Party, uh, represented by Linda Masari. And we have Build Alliance, is now the Build Alliance, Dr. Noah Manika. Then we have Then we have Dr. Sibamakoli representing Kurt and uh, and Gina Sibamakoli who is representing the NPF. <laughs> As I said, Dr. Mazzola is running it um, and uh, uh, we have also invited uh, Tim and Mr. but uh, he's traveling so he will not be able to join us today. So we welcome you all, and thank you for accepting our invitation to speak on the forthcoming elections on behalf of your political parties. There are more than a hundred um, registered political parties in the country, and it's Zimbabwe. Yes, you will. Thank you. Um, 
I represent a coalition of parties, not one party. Code is the oldest coalition in Zimbabwe. Code stands for Coalition of Democrats. Our offering is genuine change, anchored on core values of service and servant leadership, of moving away from power, control, and command to engagement and participation, moving away from centers of authority to centers of responsibility, moving from we will do this and we will give you this to we will enable you to do this for yourselves. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Noah Manika, and I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us. I, like uh, Dr. Makoni said, I was also conditioned myself uh, to really talk about the broader issues uh, because I really believe that one of the biggest problems that we have in Zimbabwe is always looking at winning an election instead of actually thinking about being in the country. Uh, so the Build Zimbabwe Alliance actually started as a personal mantra of mine uh, to encourage people uh, to not be on the sidelines and to attempt to mobilize Zimbabweans wherever they are to participate in the direction of their country and in building it. And what we have done is set up a platform uh, for people, for like-minded people who share our values that, you know what, it's high time every citizen in this country felt like they could play a part. And beyond feeling like they could play a part, actually provide a platform for them to do so and uh, go beyond uh, this uh, requirement that is there that in order for you to actually effectively contribute anything to your uh, country, you have to have been in some party structures for six, seven, eight years or something. That has nothing to do with competency, that has nothing to do with honesty, that has nothing to do with the ability to actually impact your constituency. So that is our commitment. We have created this Build Zimbabwe platform and Alliance platform, and it is for people to come together to work uh, to provide solutions for their country. It doesn't matter where they are, whether they're in the diaspora or here. Thank you. Linda? Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Linda Congress on Saturday. And uh, there are some core values that we have to relate to and which we're going to be actually implementing as we're going forward, which are the critical fundamental issues like constitutionalism. We are living in a country that has never abided by the rule of law, by the constitution of this country, and where political parties and political leaders have been doing what they want really, really over the years, which has had a negative bearing on the quality of life of every Zimbabwe in this country. So going forward, MDCT, led by Dr. Kube, wants to ensure that the rule of law is preserved in this country, and that constitutionalism becomes, the, the constitution of Zimbabwe becomes the supreme law of this land. We cannot continue with the same negative, repetitive behavior of just blaming power at the expense of the masses and having the masses going to work with low salaries and everything else. So in short, MDCT led by Dr. Kube is standing for social democracy, labor justice, gender justice, and inclusivity. We are speaking to the issues to do, to do with devolution of power. We want every Zimbabwe to have equal opportunities to be able to live as a first-class citizen in their own country and not to live as a second-class citizen. Thank you.
saying we, we, we. Who is we? We the NPF. I thought you were about to be the representative. That's why we've been ruling for the past 10 years. That's 
why you will not be ruling for the next state seven years. <laughs> because we are not people of, we are not political parties of both states. In short, you have no message which resonates with the aspirations of the Zimbabwe people. Mm. All you do is that try to set a, a, a periodic elections. The only other party which is the consequence is the FTCT, which is fishing, no splitting left, right, and center. Even the Zanpi have tried to give you the pieces of becoming a political party. These other parties you are talking about, we really don't, well, it's the democratic right, which incidentally was brought by Zanpi in this country. Here is Smith has denied it to you and the whites. Zanpi has made the sacrifice to make you become voters. You have voted ever since 1980. You are going to vote again in July. Before you start shouting, it's Zanpi. Just say thank you for making us be voters. <laughs> But then in the last couple of days, we saw you moving from being an independent candidate now to um, a splinter group in the NDCT now led by uh, Tokoza and Kobe. What's going on? <coughs> Linda uh, spoke about 
was it too much to ask for the NDC to actually go to Congress and do the, to, to, and, and, and discuss or decide on who should be the leader of the NDC through proper party channels? Uh, thank you very much. Um, before I go there, uh, I allow me to answer briefly to Awam Changwa. The splitting of political parties is not a phenomenon uh, that is peculiar to the MDC or MDCT. Zanupia is actually split on nine occasions. Uh, it split, split from Zabu, and it split into Zoom, and then by Edgar Tekere, then to ZDP, Chichilau, uh, the Zimbabwe Union of, Dem of Democrats, led by Margaret Dogo, then to UPP, led by Shumba, then Floris by Sherema, NPP led by Nan Juru, National Patriotic Front led by Bamki Niri, Zapu now led by Dabewa because uh, Zapu and Zanu united to form Zanu, but Zapu then came out of Zanu. <laughs>
official statement of the Minister of Social Affairs. And that is the success that we're hearing uh, today, that ZANU-PF has really been successful. 90% unemployment and it's success. Uh, people are able to pay their children's tuition and it's success. You're not able to get money from your bank account and it's success. Look, it's high time we Zimbabwe has decided that we are not stupid. We are not fools. Zimbabweans are not fools. And some of us, you know, we may look and I hear all those things of all you people are inconsequential and all of that. That has been the problem in this country. That there are some people who say some Zimbabwean citizens are of no consequence. And as a result, we continue with the same leadership that went and sat uh, at the feet of a witch doctor who said that there is oil coming out of the law. <laughs> we are expected to accept that. Listen, I come from a family that participated in the liberation struggle. Robson Manika Avenue is named after my uncle. He's one of the first people who went to the liberation struggle before it was uh, popular to do so, 1963. In 17 years, we didn't see our uncle. He was fighting out there. Before some people left, uh, whether they were in school or whatever, before they wanted to join the liberation struggle, we're not fools. And it's high time we Zimbabwean uh, citizens reclaimed our history and the narrative in this country. And Zimbabwe has insisted that we have every right to determine the future of this country and to participate in it. There's one, let me say one more thing. There's a man from Zanopia who said at one time, Cheroti Kaisal, Tongi, Papalu, Box, you vote for it. Do you agree with that? No. We don't agree with that. We are intelligent people. When a country which is one of the most literate countries in Africa has 90% unemployment and this kind of dysfunction, something is wrong somewhere. So, uh, you know, I didn't come here, honestly, I didn't come here for a political debate, but if that's where you want us to go, we'll go there. <laughs> Thank you, Violet. Uh, before I answer your question, let me just plead with my colleagues that I don't believe we came here to score points. We came here to share ideas with compatriots so that we can find solutions to the problems affecting all of us. Firstly. Secondly, <laughs> le let me say with due respect to Chris Mutangwa, ZANU and ZAPU led the people of Zimbabwe in the struggle for independence. ZANU and ZAPU did not liberate Zimbabwe. Many millions of Zimbabweans who didn't carry a ZANU or a ZAPU card participated in the liberation struggle to liberate, to liberate themselves. I think we should move away from the arrogance of attributing to few people the struggle that belongs to the whole of Zimbabwe. And on that note, Violet, we are today in the same position where we were in the 50s and 60s during the nationalist struggle, when the nation of Zimbabwe is confronting a common enemy that has impoverished them, that has taken away their liberty, that has intimidated them, that has brutalized them. And for us to win this struggle, we need to unite in the same way that we united to liberate the country from white minority rule. And I must underline that in this struggle, who needs to be liberated first, just as in the anti-colonial struggle,
as General Tongo said, this struggle is to liberate the whites from themselves as it is to liberate the oppressed blacks. Fast forward 38 years later, the struggle is to liberate ZANU-PF from itself as we liberate the majority of Zimbabwe. Thank you. The most important thing is that the Rainbow Coalition, I say it is a party made up of the old and the youth. The old we have, we have war veterans and ordinary people who saw, who experienced the liberation struggle. And they believe today, 38 years after independence, that what they fought for is yet to be achieved. That's why I'm saying we have to go back to the basics of providing infrastructure, <coughs> the basic health care, basic food to Zimbabwe. That's what we fought for. And that's what our people who Zimbabwe deserve to say. Dr. Manika, if you would like to go Yeah, you had indicated earlier that, you know, Opposition parties must unite your fight. I'm not fighting against uh, the opposition, any opposition party. I am pursuing my democratic right as a Zimbabwean to provide an alternative for Zimbabweans. Look, this, this dumping, dumping down when it comes to democracy for Africans, and we are the, the ones who do it to ourselves. Uh, at a time when we should all be doing everything that we need to do to mobilize Zimbabweans and to tell them what is at stake. By the way, in my, our own responsibility as the Bill Zimbabwe Alliance, and I'm sure some of you have seen this, we've been very, very disciplined because we see our responsibility not just to campaign for elections, but to really educate the electorate about what is at stake. And it's really a long-term thing as far as we're concerned. The people deserve the truth. And anyone who wins this election, by the way, because they have excited uh, the, uh, the, the electorate and they win on the basis of this um, excitement about things that cannot be delivered is actually going to be in trouble with the Zimbabwean electorate. I don't think that they will last uh, one term. I really don't believe that. We have to tell people the truth. Our people are not fools. They are not idiots. We are a very, very educated country and we need to tell people the truth, even about how difficult it is going to be to bring down employment from 90% or whatever it is. Uh, we have to tell people the truth. And we also have to focus this fight on what matters. Here's what I believe, and, I, and I'll be short. I really believe that this fight is about the war on poverty. If we don't win the war on poverty, we cannot move this country into the ranks of the first world. So we must pay attention to the rural economy, make sure that we do everything to integrate the rural economy into the national economy. And there are times when we talk about these big infrastructure projects. Let me tell you an important infrastructure project. It's linking, making sure that the roads that link the rural economy to the national one are good roads. And right now, let me end with this. Remember how Zimbabwe is split up when it comes to constituencies. We have 60 constituencies in the cities, 150 constituencies in the rural areas. The majority of our people live in the rural areas. The majority of our people live under poverty. And unless you can demonstrate to the Zimbabwean people that your commitment is to deal with that, you must not be elected. And just a short one, 30 seconds. What, what is uh, the status of candidate selection in your party now? So, because our commitment is not just to win an election, but we have a civic uh, responsibility, we really invest a lot of time in identifying, educating, uh, even our candidates. Let me tell you, we are going to have a repeat of the same problem that we've had, that a lot of MPs that have been elected, even under Zanu PF, have never read the constitution of the country, don't know what their constitutional responsibilities are. And if in the opposition we just elect people in the opposition because they have been cut ten members of our party for six years, but we never go into an educational process uh, for, for doing that, then we're in trouble. So our focus is actually selecting, identifying rather, and investing in those candidates and providing those candidates who have demonstrable 
um, understanding of what their responsibilities are. So you're building are. in all 210? Yes, that's our goal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And uh, NPS? <laughs> what is the status of the candidate selection? Hello. I, I think before I answer that, uh, there's, there's a contribution that I want to make, uh, which I think is very fundamental. The arguments that Mochango uh, uh, is displaying shows something which is very fundamental. And he gave it out uh, when he addressed um, some intellectuals at Sardis. He told all of us, including diplomats, that decisions in this country are made at KG6. Whether they are political, electoral, economic, they are made at KG6. And it was on the day that he, he had been uh, selected to the Minister of Information, and I know a decision was also made at KG6 that he should not be Minister of Information. We are talking of something that he know. So we have something that is very fundamental, that should be addressed, not only during this campaign, but it is a governance issue that we have to confront as Zimbabwe. We have really to define the role of the military in governance and even in elections and ensure that what we saw last year where the army moved in and took over power should not be repeated. And that is very fundamental. That is the elephant in the room. That is the reason why the LDCT won elections in 2008 and could not take over power. It was a <laughs> that we are doing 
is centered upon candidates' selection. So we have people that were. So you will be all 210 constituents? Definitely. Okay. And in 1958 wards in this country. <laughs> yes. All right. Maybe before Mr. Chairman comes in, I want uh, Mr. Mondora to respond to what I also asked uh, James Mondora. You know, this whole issue of the military. Do you honestly think that the military, as JSC has said, the junta, did all this in November just to let the opposition come and take over? Do you think they spent all this time to remove Robert Mugabe just to allow the opposition to take over? And also, what are you going to do about all these um, uh, issues that have heard that JSC has raised that there are thousands of uh, soldiers in the provinces? We are going to take over, whether the military likes it or not. We are going to take over, whether they win it or not. It's not up to them. We will not take over governmental power in this country as a result of the benevolence of the military. We are very, very clear that we want to take over governmental power through peaceful, constitutional, and democratic means. And the government differently and change the lives of our people for the better. Our enemy is not some people. Our enemy is poverty, misery, murder, mayhem, a corruption, and selective application of the law. That is what we seek to fix. Um, regarding the, I, I am involved in the issue of electoral reforms. Uh, regarding the electoral reforms, one of the outstanding issues is the militarization of the election management body. 80% of workers in, in, in Z a military background, are from the military. And I can anticipate what my brother Mchamba is going to say. He is going to say, well, they retired and they, they are required to deploy. But let me say, these military people are not there by accident. In 2002, the military officers, the top military officers of this country issued a fatwa, and they say, that they will, not, uh, they will not salute anybody without liberation war credentials. After that, officers, military officers were deployed uh, to Z. So these people, although they have retired, they are recipients of that order. And they cannot deal with the, they cannot do justice to the electoral, uh, the, to the, to the electoral system of this country. They are recipients of that order. And I dare say, they are recipients of a, an unconstitutional and illegal order. Yes. Regarding the preparations, uh, the MTC has uh, uh, issued um, notices for applications for primary uh, election for, for considerations as candidates for primary elections. Uh, these applications are open to all members <laughs> of the MTC, irrespective of race, color, tribe, uh, irrespective of sex. And in our application, we have said that we are going to adhere as far as we can, and we want to get it 100%. We want to adhere to the women's quota 50%. We have gone beyond that to say 20% of our candidates will be youth. It is a double whammy to a woman, who, to a person who is both a young woman, who is both a youth and a woman, because they benefit from that. We are now in the process, our election directorate uh, finished today to, 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 uh, uh, to prepare this. To wrap up. Yes, to, uh, to, to prepare the list. We are going to start with consensus building where two candidates who are contesting each other are encouraged to talk. After that, we will have primary elections to determine who our candidates are. And we will finish this by the 12th of May. Thank you. Thank you. So much has been said about what Zanubia is, is, is doing, especially uh, on the issue of uh, soldiers who have been deployed to the provinces. Why is Zanubia doing that? What can you say about this? <laughs> Sorry, it looks like I have come to a gathering and to a panel of narcissists. <laughs> <laughs>
they actually think that those cameras are the deciders of the vote of the, the election. No, you don't have to play to this gallery. You play, you play to the gallery of the electorate of Zimbabwe. And that's where ZANU-PF plays its game. We are down with the people. We are the one part which in history organized the Zimbabwe people to ever become changers in their own history. It's a matter of record, including the presence of all these politicians in front of us, or pseudo-politicians. <laughs> 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 are you prepared to openly declare that the military will not I, 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 intervene in these whole, elections? A whole series of diatribes have been said about <laughs> my, my party. It looks like we are the game in town. And we don't mind because I'm a poor guy, no matter. All these other people they are just only playing for the gallery. If if you want to have an issue with the military of Zimbabwe and you hate it so much, I've got one dictator. We had a military which we hated as young people. It was called the Rhodesian Army. We decided that we didn't want it, but we could not deal with that army on the soil of Zimbabwe. We have to go into exile. As young people, we know Romania, we know Yugoslavia, we know Cuba, we know China. So if you have got issues, if you have got issues with the Zimbabwe state, if you have got issues with the Zimbabwe state, and you want to bring it into electoral play, that's your problem. Our journalists to come with us to witness uh, some of the things that we experienced. So in February, we were supposed to have a rally uh, at, um, in, in Zimba. And we had police clear to have that rally. But when we then uh, organized to have that rally, we were told that the Minister of Justice, uh, Ziambi Ziambi, had actually written a letter to the District Council of Zimba and said that no political party except zanu -PF was allowed to campaign in Zimba until after the election. This is on record. I can see a couple of the journalists who were with us here. That was designed to intimidate us from actually going into the community so that even though we actually had police clearance, we would be afraid because uh, you know, an order had come from uh, zanu -PF. Look, as I said before, we, we, can, we can talk about all these things and we can try to point, point ourselves white when we are black, but that doesn't change the fact that Zanu PF has been a failure at governing. It doesn't change it. And all you have to do is to look at your own circumstances. If you leave this room, uh, you know, believing that there is success, then you are saying this is white when it's black. The objective facts are that in this country we have 90% unemployment. The objective fact in this country is that the majority of our women in the rural areas are still carrying firewood on their heads. The, 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 the objective truth is that we have young women in Udiriro who are prostituting now because you know, there's no money in home. The objective truth is that this country is being sustained by people from the diaspora who are sending money to replace the health uh, insurance, which was destroyed by people like Kapek Mube, getting, 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 
getting $500,000 a month in salary when other people are suffering. Look, this is not an accusation. This is a problem. point about our state, the condition of the Zimbabwean. We are poor and we are thoroughly intimidated and fearful. That is what ZANU-PF has done to us. And when we talk about the need for change, the first need for change is to remove the fear that has been inflicted on our people over 38 years. In fact, for some of us, it's more than 38 years because we lived in fear in Rhodesia and we continue to live in fear in Zimbabwe. The other material conditions that reflect our state, poverty and unemployment, are superimpositions on a soul that is thoroughly intimidated and fearful. Uh, Mr. Monzora and um, 
Dennis Mawari on this issue of the military, that do you think that they did all this to remove Mugabe, just to allow the opposition to take over? Yeah. And also, on the issue of reforms, what is the opposition doing about this? Because you all cry about the, that there are no media reforms, there are no um, security sector reforms. Um, some of you have never even seen the voters' role. So if all those things are not given, you, you don't get all those things before the elections, why participate in elections that you know will only favor one party according to you? Well, the answer to your question is no. The military did not stage a coup on November 17 in order to hand over power to somebody else. Second answer to your question is the whole purpose of struggle is to make change including making change on these points about the voters' role, about the intimidation of citizens, about the denial of citizens, their right to free choice. That's why we are in the trenches of the struggle for change. And Coalition? Yes, we are aware that the victory is there on the ground. We always do our meetings. We meet one or two. But we can't say the numbers, we haven't counted them anyway. But we are aware that the electoral system and the field is not, is not, is not flat for everyone. But we cannot hold our hands and just say, until they reform. Let's, talk about, let's fight for reforms, but at the same time, doing, doing what we can in our best to make sure that we defeat some fear. Just the last question on reforms, and then I'm going to open up uh, you know, the floor for questions. Uh, jealousy on the issue of reforms, I, I think this is a very important issue. Uh, how can we make sure that the opposition is not going to cry foul after the elections? Because we're always hearing the same issues about the voters' role, about the media, about the military, and so many other uh, problems that people see with the electoral uh, system. So what can you say about this? I think on the question of um, electoral reforms, you can only go, you can use political parties that, that are in parliament, and you can even introduce uh, private members, member deals. But we, we, we have seen, even the civil society has inputted uh, the election results that have done quite well to, to lobby parliament, to align the electoral act to the new constitution. And those are steps that people are taking. As MPs, we have also taken uh, steps to petition AU, to uh, <coughs> petition subject <coughs> on issues that we think are very fundamental. And I, I think that's why this discussion is, is really setting around the involvement of the army, because the army is the elephant in the room. If we don't keep the army out of our politics, we are not doing anything. So we, we, we are exploring ways of uh, ensuring that uh, we achieve uh, the full democratization of Zimbabwe. And one of the things that we are we, going to do is also mobilizing voters. You know it's very difficult to rig an election that has uh, a turnout of about 70%. They, they will not, not find enough uh, soldiers to, 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 to mark ballot papers and staff. So we, we, we believe, and rightly so, <laughs> we believe that rightly so that the fact that we have a multiplicity of political parties is giving Zimbabweans a chance and they are giving them options. Yes. I believe that a lot of people will come out to vote on the election day. I don't know whether the, the election day is on the 18th of July as announced by the coup announcer in, 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 in Zimbabwe. <laughs> but what is definite is that the number of serious political parties that, that are at play in this election, we are going to see a lot of people coming out on election day to vote. If the voter turnout is anything above 70% in this election, it will be very difficult for the soldiers and junior peers to read it. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Monzola, how do you characterize the, the voter registration exercise okay, in general? Well, the voter registration exercise uh, was not satisfactory. Um, uh, and I'll give you, it was uh, skewed. Uh, I'll give you only one, 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 one set of statistics to prove this. Uh, when we extended the voter registration uh, uh, program, the biometric voter registration program, 
Uh, the, the way a number of uh, mobile kits that were deployed into uh, the country, I'll pick on the three, the highest three provinces. Uh, Midlands, 490 kits. Uh, Mashona and East, 430 kits. Ma Tebele and South, 390 kits. These were the three top, the highest provinces where the highest number of kids were, were deployed. And let me tell you that Midlands is where the president comes from, yeah. number one. And Mashona and East mm. is where the vice president <coughs> better comes from, number two. Mm. Ma Tebele and South is where pre vice president Mohadi comes from. So the highest number of mobile kids during the voter registration exercise were deployed where the presidium is. And that is hardly fair. Um, we, we, we also uh, saw a massive disenfranchisement uh, of Zimbabweans in the diaspora. Our constitution says every Zimbabwean has the right to vote. It does not say every Zimbabwean in Nyanga, every Zimbabwean in Mutoko, every Zimbabwean in Chorojo. It says every Zimbabwean has the right to vote. Every Zimbabwean, wherever situated uh, okay. in this world have the right of work. So it is far from satisfactory. Thank you. And uh, so last question for Mr. Machamba, and then I'll allow the audience to ask uh, questions. Um, you, and it's, and people are complaining about the AMA media reports. And just uh, watching the ABC, especially in the last few weeks, um, seeing um, even my rallies, one uh, and Chamisa, from my rural areas, the kind of coverage that we see is actually shocking. You know, you, 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 you are advertising to the whole world that there's this new dispensation. But then, when we see this bias more media, I, I, I think there's a problem that, especially for me as a media person, so do you really think that there is an equal playing field where the ZBC or the state media only covers uh, the ruling party? Well, I want to start by commenting on the bias which is in the uh, presenter of this show tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you in, tell... what, in what way is the right the right yes. bias? I, I, I thought I'm asking the question that each person the, has to respond. The moment respond. you already say shocking, this and but, that. But and then, what then then issue has, as a journalist, did now, I see it from you, you, you are even, before I can answer, <laughs> you are trying to make it into a debate between me, which is really bad.
Can you make your questions short, please? Thank you. My question is directed to Congress in Chamba. I was 12 years in 79, so I didn't go to Cuba, to Romania, whatever. But I know that Zimbabwe was being liberated here, not in Cuba. The flag was the father. I was born in 68 in Rhodesia. Not in Cuba. Mm. I didn't participate in the struggle, but I was born at the front. You were training in the so you understand what I'm saying more. I heard you just say Zanu PF is a part of the history and history. Is it true that Zanu PF is a part of the history and history? It was not the only nationalist more. And the militants were not the only players in the nationalist. I always knew what they took up from Kakao, Zanapas, and so forth. Yes, I'm just asking, well, I might not be phrasing it well, but finally, please do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but finally, I have to say that Zanupi brought the democratic right to Zimbabwe. I, I just want to, maybe this one, I'll ask eloquently. During the Lanchester House ceasefire period, the United Nations was not involved. I tried my research in that area. The common law peacekeeping force was involved. Can we say it was a, if Zan won the eight elections, it was raised by the British? Is that true? <laughs> okay, we'll take two more and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, my question is directed to the opposition. I'm over here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Telling us of the deliver, the deliver that they have for for the electorate, they are busy complaining, and focusing on that area instead of focusing on the electorate. So I'm very disappointed by the opposition. Yeah. record of what our history is and it looks like because some of the people who are here they didn't participate they are jealous of those who participated yeah. uh, unfortunately uh, 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 
Unf unfortunately, unfortunately, they equate participating in the liberation struggle to a, a match between Highlanders and Dynamos. It's not. You go and die. You have only one life, and you go and die, and you don't come back. So don't try to be jealous. Just try to respect. Just try to respect the generation which made that choice to die, so that you could be free. That's all. That's all I ask for. Uh, you cannot disparage a generation which sacrificed so much for you to be where you are today, simply because you've got a gripe that Muchangwa now looks glorious when I survived that war. Okay. It was a difficult thing to survive. Secondly, the United well, you know, then you can recolonize it. You can recolonize the country, try and then get your chance at creating your own army. And I wish you well. Yes. Then oh, he asked about the United Nations and about. Well, I wanted to answer his question. Okay. Look, the United Nations participated in the elections of Zimbabwe in 1980 for your own record. It did. We eventually to go to the United Nations to get the resolution of lifting the sanctions undone. That was your UN participation. Maybe you need to come. I'm a very good historian. I have a chance to teach you. Come, I will. Thank <laughs> you. 